Good morning, people of God. This is Tuesday, June the 15th. Amen. Tax day for all of you all that have not done your taxes yet. And I'm a guilty party. I was uh, a little late on getting mine in, did mine yesterday, and uh, put them in the mail uh, on yesterday. But I thank God for this Tuesday, another opportunity to come before you with a brief word of encouragement to the to the body of Christ. Uh, today, I want to talk about uh, something that probably many of us do, uh, but really, if we fully have our trust in God, we should not do, and that's wary. So my word of encouragement for you today is don't worry. And I know that was a song out some years ago, don't worry, be happy, but uh, we want to not worry and rejoice in the Lord. So uh, whatever comes our way, you know, whatever situations or circumstances that we find ourselves engaged in, uh, we don't want to worry. We want to stand on the promises of God, stand on the word of God. The word of God is what's going to sustain us. It's going to take us through. It's going to get us through the trying times that we uh, that we face. So I want to just step through uh, about three scriptures on today, three sets of scriptures. Uh, and I'm going to really be brief on today. Uh, so Proverbs 1 and 7 is a scripture that I really like. Uh, Proverbs 1 and 7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. We have a lot of people today that don't fear the Lord. They do not fear the Lord. They don't fear the word of God. They don't fear the men or women of God. Don't fear their parents. They have no fear, so to speak. Uh, but the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And we're not talking about a trembling fear. We're talking about a reverential fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Can't tell them anything. They despise wisdom and instruction. And we sometimes see that in our children. You're trying to impart wisdom and knowledge into your children as they grow up and trying to prevent them from falling into some of the traps, some of the pitfalls that maybe we experienced as we were growing up ourselves. But now that we have gotten older and wiser, we realize that that could have been prevented if we would have listened or if someone would have told us that during the time that we were growing up. But you have a generation today that don't want to hear, they don't want to hear anything. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Amen. So if we are talking to God, if we're talking to God, if we have a relationship with God, then it's probably uh, in line with us not having that, that sense of worry, that sense of, of fear. The second scripture I want to talk about uh, deals with fear. And 2 Timothy 1 and 7. And this is when Paul was talking to uh, his young minister, his son in the gospel, Timothy. And he was recalling something with him and bringing back to his remembrance the faith that was in his grandmother and the faith that was in his mother. And, you know, Paul said, I have this confidence that this same faith is in you. You know, you don't have to be timid. You don't have to be fearful uh, of people or the situations that, that you find yourself in. If God is on your side, then you have everything that you need. Greater is he that is within us than he that's in the world. We have to have full confidence, full trust in God. So the seventh verse, as he's talked to him about uh, his background and his lineage of, of, of faith, uh, faith uh, bearing people. Now he's letting Timothy know for God has not given us. And that goes to all of us today in the body of Christ. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, power, Holy Ghost power. He's given us power. He's given us love and love is so essential. Love is so key in this time that we're living in right now. And it's been key all along for the body of Christ, that love is who we are. Love is who God is. 
And if we are the children of God, then love should be in our DNA. We should not be people that are bitter, that are, that are hateful, that are resentful, you know, people that are conniving. That should not be a part of who we are. Our, our DNA should be love. They will know that we are his disciples by our love, by the love that we show, the love that we demonstrate. So he said, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Thank you, God. Thank you for a sound mind that you're able to rationalize things. You're able to uh, to stand on the word of God and you're able to discern things and see things the way that they really are and not how, not how we imagine them to be. We get into a lot of trouble sometimes just uh, bringing up scenarios in our own mind of what could possibly happen, or what they may have said about me, about us. But we have to make sure that we are focused on the word of God. We're focused on the things of God. And then finally, I want to go to 1 Peter 5. And I want to read a few verses there in 1 Peter 5. I thank God for his word on today, uh, preached on Sunday. Uh, keep the faith. Keep fighting the good fight of faith. You know, our faith, I believe as long as we have faith in God, we have trust in God then we're not going to waver. We're not going to find ourselves, you know, falling into this, uh, into this pit of worry. But that's where the devil wants to, he wants to uh, detour us. He wants to divert us to that place where we uh, are worried and we're so concerned about things. <clears throat> but God said, you know, in his, in his word in Matthew, you know, that, 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 you know, the father takes care of the fowls of the air you know, the flowers don't have to worry about how they're going to get their uh, their nutrition. You know, the sun shines on them. They get the water from the rain that's necessary. So if all of these things are happening for the fowls and for the flowers, then much more are those things going to be taken care of for us. We have to learn how to put our trust in God wholly and completely that we stand on his word, that we seek first his kingdom and all of his righteousness. And then all of the things that we need, that we have desire for, they can be added unto us. But we have to do what's, what's right first, and that's seeking the kingdom of God. First Peter 5, the elders which are among you, I exhort, whom am also an elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre. You know, we're not just doing this for money, but of a ready mind, neither as, a, <clears throat> as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. We have to be an example. We have to be an example to this world, example to our family members, example if we're leaders in the church, examples to our, our flock that God has given us uh, the, the responsibility or the shepherdship over. We have to be examples. We have to let our light continue to shine, as I said on last week. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Ye all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility for God resisteth the proud and he giveth grace to the humble. Therefore, it's not in the, in the verse there, but that kind of leads us to it. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. And, you know, because sometimes we do worry. We worry about positions and we worry about our children and we worry about uh, just a number of things. Worry about uh, how things are going to turn out from the pandemic. But here's what we need to do. Verse number seven. We need to cast all of our cares upon him. For he careth for us. We need to cast all of our cares upon him. We need to come to the Lord and we need to give him our, our burdens. We need to give him our circumstances, give him our situations. We need to come to him, come to him humbly, come to him uh, uh, with a clean heart and 
pure hands and pure minds, we come to him and we submit ourselves to the Lord that he may have uh, reign and responsibility over what we uh, do. He speaks to us. Verse eight says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, is walking about, seeking whom he may devour. I want you to stay on guard, people of God. Stay on guard, stay on your post, stay watchful, stay prayerful, stay vigilant. Don't worry. Because we belong to the king, the king of glory is going to come and we belong to the king. We belong to the king of glory. So I thank you today for listening in. I pray that God blesses you on this Tuesday and I pray that God will bless the people of God uh, throughout this week. Be strong, be encouraged, uh, be courageous. And I always end by saying God loves you and I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. God bless you. We'll see you next Tuesday. The Lord bless and says the same.